the only thing that's standing in the way of your awake presence is your thoughts, thinking. It's not a big deal. You've invested this thinking with so much belief and reality. This is what you've been conditioned to do, just as I had been. We all are. We're conditioned to believe our thoughts, to put so much attention and focus on our thoughts that we live in a world of thoughts, not reality. We interpret the world through our thoughts. We don't see the world as it is. So naturally, we're not happy. Naturally, we have suffering. Naturally, we experience ups and downs in life. Sometimes days are good, sometimes bad. But honestly, they are never as good as they are when we're free of thoughts. Because awakening into this presence is just that, really. Just being free of thoughts. That's all. It's simply being free of thoughts. When we're free of thoughts, we're present. We're aware of life as it is. And it is so miraculous. It is so wonderful to simply be everything we've ever searched for in our entire life. Happiness, love, peace, freedom, truth, wisdom are here. They've always been here, right here. We've never been apart from this. But thoughts say that we must look for it outside. We must figure it out. And the one who's figuring it out, this I, is also a thought. Just another thought. Yeah, that's all. So for most of humanity, we live in our thoughts. They are our reality. How we see the world is how we think it is how we believe it is. That's how we see it. Who we are is who we think we are. It's amazing. It's very limited. We cannot imagine what we truly are. It is so vast. It will not fit into a thought. It's so much more wonderful than anything we can ever imagine. This is what's talking to you. Not a personal person. You could call this the impersonal I. It's not limited to a person, not limited to a body, a mind, shape, form, or name, or a thought. It's far beyond that and before that. And it is what you are too. You just don't know it yet. You're just not aware of it yet. So let's see if we can fix that. In the beginning, as we start our spiritual path, our thoughts are so real to us, we believe it's what we are. And we believe that the world is how we think it is. It just seems like reality to us. That's until we start meditating, until we start turning inward. Until then, all the spiritual books we read, all the teachers we go to, are just feeding us with more thoughts. I mean, they're really not. They're, they're trying to, to transmit this great teaching that's beyond thoughts, but we're interpreting it through our thoughts and we're keeping it as a thought. So it's very limited. And even though we may have wonderful experiences on retreats, because we have a moment of freedom from thoughts, as soon as we're back in our daily life, the thoughts come back and we go back into suffering again. We lose this spaciousness that we had on the retreat. But as we start meditating more, we see our thoughts as something separate from us. We can witness them moving through our minds, coming and going, like waves rising and falling on a vast ocean. 
At first, it's disturbing. We call it monkey mind, right? Because for the first time, we're aware of our thoughts as not reality, but just something happening in us. And there's so many of them, this stream of thoughts rolling. We're trying to be silent and still and peaceful. And inside, there's just this raging storm of thoughts coming. It's shocking to first see this. Often people stop meditating when they first experience this. And sometimes people don't even meditate because they don't want to see their thoughts. They're so addicted to them. They believe them so strongly that they don't want to know that they're just thoughts, not reality. They don't want to know this. It's too upsetting to them. They're so invested in this, invested in this sense of an I, invested in this, their opinions about, about reality, about life, about people about themselves. They're so invested in this that they don't want to know. They want to live in the dream and keep living in the dream, no matter how much suffering there is. This is the suffering they know, the dream they know, as opposed to the reality that they don't know. So since the reality is a mystery to them, they're afraid. But if they're willing and they start meditating, and many people have by now, they start seeing their thoughts. And over time, they start developing some separation from their thoughts. And as they do that, they sense more peace, so they keep doing it. They sense more happiness in their life, so they keep doing it. Their life improves dramatically as they separate from their thoughts. They see the thoughts coming and going. And then the stream, this this raging storm of thought slows down as we lose interest in it, as we start focusing on something else, what's aware of these thoughts. Once we separate from our thoughts, we start becoming aware of something is aware of these thoughts. Before I thought I was a thought, and now I know a thought is just something happening, but what's aware of this? And we start turning inward and seeing what's aware feeling what's aware. And what's aware is this great infinite spaciousness, this enormous peace, peace beyond understanding, this incredible well-being and contentment and completion, and this infinite unconditional love. I mean, we don't run right into it right away, but we find levels of it. More and more we start becoming aware of it. And even just the most superficial glimpse of it is wonderful, astounding. This is called awakening. You know, it changes our life. It puts us much more firmly on the spiritual path. Yeah. And we're present, present, where truth is, where God is where you are. In this presence, there's room enough for everything. There's room for thoughts to come to. Thoughts come and go. But we don't let them distract us anymore. That's the difference. For a moment, if you're aware of your thoughts, ask yourself, Am I the thinker of this thought? Did I create this thought? Am I responsible for this thought? Or is it just something that's happening? Look at your hands for a moment. Are you responsible for the growth of your fingernails? Are you making them grow? Are you consciously making your fingernails grow? No, they're just growing. Are you consciously making your liver function? Or is it just functioning? Are you responsible for the organization and intelligence of the cells that create your heart, your kidneys? No. This just happened. There is an intelligence at work. But it's not your limited self that's doing this. It's not your thoughts. No matter how you think, you cannot make your fingernails grow or stop growing. 
You cannot make your liver function better. It's already functioning fine. So these things just happen, don't they? And this is like your thoughts. They're just happening. Just like your liver, your kidneys, the cells in your body, there is an infinite intelligence that's at work here. But it's not your limited thinking self. These thoughts are just happening. What you have control over in your body is what food you put into it. If you put junk food into it, your liver, your kidneys, your heart will not function as well. Eventually you'll get sick, heart disease, cancer. So you put healthy things into it, healthy food, healthy water, fresh air. You exercise it. You take care of your body. And this is how you remain healthy. Or you don't. You neglect it and eat junk food and breathe bad air, don't exercise it, and it gets sick. It's natural. This is what's going to happen. This is what you can do. If you want a healthy body, you treat it in a healthy way. If you want a healthy mind, you do the same. You don't feed your mind junk food. You don't feed it horror movies and things that, and, and look at the evening news with all this distressful things, it's going to make you upset. It's going to fill your mind with images of suffering and pain. And you don't really need that much of that, do you? But you have enough suffering already. Why add more? So instead, be very careful of what you feed your mind. Feed it with love. Feed it with peace. Feed it with happiness, possibilities. When you do this, you're in alignment with what you are, your true infinite self. Because this is the source of all happiness, all peace, all love. So when you feed it with these things, you're in alignment with your true self, you're in alignment with truth. Is there suffering in the world? Yes, of course. Look at people, they're suffering like crazy. But mostly they're suffering from thoughts. They're suffering from suffering thoughts, from thoughts of fear, thoughts of lack, thoughts of anger, judgment, resentment, guilt, shame, insecurity. hatred. They're suffering from these things, these thoughts, not even the things themselves, but the thoughts about them. I'm sure you know people who are just gloomy, suffering, always. They turn, everything has, instead of a silver lining, has a black cloud. Every silver lining has a dark cloud. They're very unhappy. Being with them kind of brings you down. They have very low energy. This is all thoughts. This is what their thoughts are. They continuously feed their mind with negative, unhealthy thoughts. And likewise, I'm sure you know some people who are just pretty positive all the time, just generally happy. And when you're with them, you feel good. You feel happy. And these people are feeding their minds with happy thoughts, positive thoughts, loving thoughts. This is a choice that everyone can make. And it's a very important choice. Most important is to wake up and be free of all thoughts. Then you find the source of this peace and love and happiness and it doesn't stop. It's here, eternal, always. That's a great discovery. But until then, feed your thoughts in a healthy way, in a loving way. Be very careful about what you put your thoughts in. Most of society is filled with junk food for the mind and junk food for the body too. And we see what that happens. 
this epidemic and healthcare crises. And there's just as much an epidemic in mental junk food, in a mental crisis. There's so much suffering in our society. And there doesn't have to be, at least in your case. You can learn to be free of your thoughts, to have this great freedom, and live in peace, love, happiness. You can do this too. It simply means becoming free of your thoughts. Are these thoughts you? Are you limited to a thought or a series of thoughts? Is there more to you than that? What is before all thoughts? What is aware of these thoughts? That must be closer to you. Are these thoughts that come and go that you consider your life and reality even your thoughts? Are you even thinking them? Are they just arising, just passing through like clouds in an infinite sky? Do you need to put so much attention on them? For a moment, whatever thought arises, ask if this thought is really necessary. I've done this for a while. I've never found one yet that is. Yeah, I haven't found a single thought that was necessary, good or bad, and I don't feed my mind with junk food. Why would I want to suffer? I have a choice, and I choose not to. You can make that choice too. I hope you do.